So good afternoon. I'm Nicola Ganive with CV Desk. Today we'll talk about uh, deploying CV CRM. I must apologize in advance. I've been quite busy setting up CVCon here in Denver, so I probably didn't pay enough attention to my slides. So you'll have to excuse me if it's not a very polished presentation, but at least all the main ideas should be in here. Um, let's start with some caveats. Um, we're going to talk a lot about how CVDesk does deploy um, new customer sites, uh, how, we, uh, how we configure those sites, etc. And really what we call the onboarding process for a new customer. <coughs> so really how we get that customer from having Excel spreadsheets up to having a CRM that is fully working, data imported, their uh, users uh, train, and they're basically up and running with the CRM. Um, this is one methodology amongst others. There's lots of implementers around here. Each of us have their own methodology. I'm not pretending mine is better than any other. Um, so take it as you know, just one piece of data, and certainly not as the absolute truth. Um, our company is focused on small to medium nonprofits. Uh, that's very important because we certainly wouldn't have such an approach with some of the larger nonprofits. Um, our approach is very low key. Most of the time, our customers have very limited budgets, um, and their really uh, pricing is very important for them. So they allow us to cut some corners and to maybe take a few shortcuts uh, because they know they wouldn't have the budget to pay for more in-depth uh, services. Um, very important, we're starting from zero. So I won't be talking here about migrating from another system, from another CRM. Um, I'm really talking about coming up from having no data in any kind of a structured way. And an ACT database for me is not a structured um, way. So I'm really talking about people that are using ACT, that are using Excel, that are using Google spreadsheets, uh, that are using constant contact and their event registrations and those kind of, um, this is the kind of data sources we have to work from. Um, I will also be talking about just the CRM. Uh, this is not tied to any CMS deployment. I won't be talking about custom integrations. Um, custom developments and all of these. So we're really staying with the basics in here. Um, and finally, I said in the presentation description that I'm going to have some um, numbers in terms of what does it take in terms of time, in terms of resources, in terms of money. You will need to take all of these numbers with a grain of salt because, you know, really how long is a piece of string? And if I'm asking that question to each of you in the room, I'm pretty sure I'll get as many answers as there are people in the room. Same is true for how much does it cost or how long does it take? Same kind of questions and same kind of answers. Um, but still, I'd like to give you some pieces of information. This is typically what we see with our customers. Any questions so far? So this being said, um, the number one success factor and the one outcome I want you to get out of this room with is that deploying a CRM is all about change. And you will be changing the way your entire organization works by deploying CVCRM. This is a profound change. We're not talking about buying a new printer in the office. We're talking about deploying a tool you're going to use every day, and that's going to transform the way you are working today. If today your staff is working with Excel spreadsheets, tomorrow they'll be working with the CRM. They'll use a completely different tool in completely different ways than what they are doing today. And like whenever they change management, um, that needs to happen. And change management means first, you need to have management support and commitment. If the board is not behind you on the CRM project, don't even start it. Do something else, because it's a failure. If the executive director is not kicking your butt every day, where are you with this CRM deployment? It's not going to be successful. It needs to be 
real support and it needs to be a commitment because it's going to go over budget. It's going to take longer. You're going to face resistance by your staff. People are going to complain. People are going to criticize that tool. People are going to tell management it does not work. You'll have to overcome all of this and management will have to be committed and say, yes, we might have difficulty starting up, but that's the way forward. We're not going back. So this is not from the very beginning of the project something that you have. Don't even launch the project. Uh, provide compelling justification for why. Uh, you'll need to start with putting all your staff in a room and telling them why are you deploying the CRM. If one day you show up and say, oh, by the way, give me your spreadsheet, that's your CRM, they will not understand it, they will reject that change. So you need to get their buy-in, you need to get them excited about the process. You need to communicate on what the process is, gain their trust, and have a clear process in place. Um, finally, uh, we always find it easier to work in small steps. So don't try to go for the big bang approach. Rather than that, start deploying only for managing your events in the first couple of months. And then you're going to move to managing your memberships. And then you're going to move to uh, personal contribution pages or anything else. So one step at a time is always better than big bang approach. Um, that's about it. Any questions so far? Anybody had a yes? Well, all right. So. Given that you're saying up front that there's going to be essentially a paradigm shift in terms of the operations, mm -hmm. like how, how do you reconcile that with, well, we're taking small steps? Because it's like, it seems like if you're going to change the paradigm, you just got to change the paradigm. So I'm not, I'm not yes, too clear. Yes, like, not, not change it from one day to the next. If you can have incremental steps and at each step show clear benefit what you, from what you've done before, this is how you're going to get an acceptance from everybody on your staff. Um, so when you deploy that CRM, um, we'll go in, in the slides and I'll give you some clues about how to do this. So maybe it's going to be clearer. But um, don't try to have everybody use it from day one. If you can find in the organization people that are more excited about this project than others, people that have pain points it's like hell, I have those five spreadsheets for each of my events uh, and I cannot know whom attended what or where. And I'm really excited about this year. I mean, that's a person you will go to, you will work with this person on managing her events, his or her events. Um, you will try to understand what are the positive outcomes of this project for that given person. And then if this person you give this person, what she expects from the CRM. She will be so enthusiastic. She will tell the coworkers, you know, it changed my life. It's just so simple. I have that screen. I click on a name. I know exactly all of the events that person went to. She's going to get the other persons excited in the organization. And that's how you're going to win the acceptance from all of the other people. There's always going to be the grumpy person in the corner that, you know, whatever you throw at him or her, she just doesn't like it. That person, the only way to convert her from where she is now to a believer in the CRM is with the majority of the other people in the office saying it's so great, it has so many benefits, it's worked so well. Then she will change her mind and then she will accept it. But no matter how long you communicate with this person, no matter how much effort you spend on training her, she will not convert on her own. She needs the acceptance of everybody else before she can convert. So this is the process we're using, and, and during the rest of the session, we'll go through this process. Uh, we call it the quick start process. And the quick is important. Again, we're very low key. We're trying to do things quickly, but well. Um, so the first step in our process is a questionnaire and import files. So what we do during this uh, process, we actually have a pre-made questionnaire. It's about a 20 pages long questionnaire that we send to each of our new customers. And it asks a lot of information about their organization. We start with an introduction so they understand the process we're gonna go through. 
and why they have to answer all of these questions. And then we ask some questions about their organization, their mission, their teams, functional areas like event management, um, contribution management, membership management, etc. Transversal areas, uh, emailing, um, um, reminders, um, keeping track of relationships with your constituents, volunteers, etc. And so for each of these areas, we have a number of questions that allows us to understand how the organization functions. How do they recruit volunteers? How do they assign volunteers to positions? Do they have volunteers just for their events? Um, or do they use volunteer as part of the services they deliver? Um, and those kinds of things. And finally, we have an area on current technology because we always try to leverage as much as possible their current systems. So if they're already using constant contact, for example, we will not tell them to go use CV mail. We will keep constant contact open, just, you know, the small steps approach. Again, we will synchronize the CRM database with constant contact. And then over time, they will gain confidence in the CRM and they might start doing a few emails with CV mail and then not need constant contact anymore. But we're delaying that decision. So initially, we're trying to integrate with what they already have to minimize the disruption. Um, and finally, we're asking them for sample import files. And we're asking them to give us at least a sample of the data they would like us to import in the CRM. Anybody have an idea why we're doing this? Yes. You know what data cleanup is going to have to happen either before or during. That's actually a very good reason. We need to, we, we never quote a data import as part of the proposal we send out. Because the only way we can quote data import is after seeing those import files, as you very rightly said, because then we need to understand what's going to be the need for data cleanup and if those files match, are they going to be easy to import or not? And, and it can drastically vary. So that's one very good answer, but that's not the only one. Uh, the data they give you for import and their reaction to how it imports may give you insight to things that they're expecting that they might not have explicitly stated. Exactly. Exactly. You would be surprised. You would be amazed. We ask very detailed and very pointed questions in this questionnaire. And sometimes we get answers that are like so way off. It's incredible. Like they tell us we have four levels of memberships. And then you look into their import files. They have 12 levels of memberships. And what are these members? Oh, I forgot about these members. These are the guys that signed last year, but they didn't re never renewed or whatever. Yeah, but still, you know, that's an additional level of memberships. What do we do with those guys? Are we keeping them on this level of membership or are we joining with another existing? Um, so really for us, getting an insight into their data helps us drill into that questionnaire and understand where they're wrong. And often where they are wrong is where there's an issue, where something is mismanaged, or where something where there's... Um, people are not aligned in the organization. Like the executive director thinks one way, the person in charge of uh, membership uh, um, has another way of doing things. We see this very often, you would be amazed. I don't think there's a single customer where we've not flagged huge discrepancies between what they thought they had and what they really had in the data files. So this is a key step. Um, once we have done, uh, once they return to us with this questionnaire, um, the next step is doing interviews. And so we're interviewing a number of key people in the organization. Um, and during those interviews, we basically go into all of the areas that were flagged uh, in the questionnaire. Um, and so we start drilling down. And as we do this, we try to understand what their pain points are. What is it that they are not doing well today? What are the reports, the pieces of information, the, the things that are not functioning well um, in the organization? And this is what we're going to showcase then as successes when the project is deployed. So then at the end of the project, we can come back to the customer and say, remember, you know, when we talked during the interviews, you told us, was very difficult for you to get a report on the expiring member next month. 
so you can send renewal letters and place phone calls. Now look in the CRM, you have three clicks and the report is on the screen. These are the wins that will you know, get us the acceptance uh, from the staff. Um, so KPI, success factors, pain points, all of these are very important outcomes. Another one is that we identify a champion as part of the customer's organization, and this is the most important person. The champion is not necessarily the executive director. In fact, most of the time it's not. Most of the time the champion is a younger person that is more computer savvy than the others, that kind of understands more than the others what the benefits of the CRM could be, and that is really excited about this project and ready to spend a huge amount of personal time on making it successful. I think that's the best definition of a champion, and you will rely on the champion for the rest of the project. If you have not identified a champion in the customer's organization, again, you probably should not start the project because you're not going to be successful. You need to have one person carrying the flag in the customer's organization. And this is the person you're going to rely on. Um, and uh, the outcome we give to the customer is a roadmap. And I'm going to spend uh, just a little time on this. Oh, um, why didn't we ask the customers about the outcomes in the questionnaire? Because we could ask the customer, what do you expect from this project? Uh, well, maybe so that you can manage their expectations a little bit. Or mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. yeah, good one. An interview is a different process than a questionnaire. Very different, very much more interactive. OK. And you would be amazed uh, how many customers don't know what they want out of the project. So if you ask the question up front, they'll say, well, I've just heard from other nonprofit organizations that having a CRM is great. <laughs> so I just want a CRM. Um, yeah, we, we get these very often. Very often customers don't know what to expect from the CRM, and I would say it's very comprehensible. They've never used the CRM before, so they have no clue what this can bring us. And so this is an area where we're kind of guiding them a little bit and where we need this dialogue, hand-holding, and extract this information from them. Um, and so that's why we don't ask the question up front. We don't want to embarrass the customer and get an answer that's not going to be useful. Instead, we want to drive the customer to this uh, realization. So the roadmap, in our case, it, it's not very complicated. You know, it's nothing like a, a comprehensive project plan you would find in those very large projects. In our case, it's a glorified project schedule. Most of the time, it's a Word document that's a couple pages long, no more. In this document, we detail all the steps we're going to go through. And probably the most important is to make very clear what you're expecting of the customer and have a date on that. So we're expecting to have all the import files by April the 30th. If we don't have those import files by April the 30th, the rest of the projects go south. And everything is delayed by the amount of time until you give us those import files. This is key. This is key. We find very often projects come to a standstill not because of us, not because of our side, but because of the customer side, because they always People always think it's going to be easy to dig those Excel spreadsheets they have on their laptop. The moment they start digging those spreadsheets out, they realize that it's a lot more complicated and it's going to take a lot more time than they initially expected. So it's key to have all of these um, right here so the customer very clearly understands what you're expecting from them, when, and why. Um, and then um, I say roll out quickly, then expand. And, and this relates to what we were just discussing before. This is the small steps. This is the easy wins. So as part of that roadmap, very often we'll have a go live. And during that go live, we'll just have a few question, a few, sorry, functions turned on in the CRM. Very few things. So you will manage your contacts, of course, because that's kind of the basis. Uh, but then just your events. And then, you know, Two weeks later, you're going to have a training on membership management, and then you're going to start managing the memberships with the CRM. 
and then maybe a month or six weeks later, we're going to have another training, and then you're going to start to manage another area of your organization through the CRM. So the CRM is live, but it's not pervasive. It's live, but it's live on few functional areas. Um, and we've went over multiple times where this was very important. So where are we? Um, so in terms of timeline, we're probably two to eight weeks out. And this is the, the, it's mostly waiting time um, on our side. Uh, it's mostly waiting for the customers to send us the inboard files. It's mostly waiting for the customers to send us that questionnaire. It's mostly waiting to have that meeting with the executive director because she or he or she is a very busy person and can't meet with us until the end of next week. So that's the kind of things we're running into. And so it seems like, you know, eight weeks seems like a long time just to start the project. But that's the reality of, of dealing um, with, you know, another organization. So in terms of resources, it's not very resource intensive because it's mostly waiting. Those interviews we've done sufficiently that we know exactly the right questions to ask and how to tweet these so we don't need a lot of preparation up front. Um, and creating that roadmap is, is, in fact, quite simple. It's not a very long document. Um, so the customer is going to need uh, a champion functional managers that are available to you. And so these are part of the requirements. So those, these people will need to be available. Um, and I'm saying consultant eventually because, you know, some customers, if, if, um, if you have, I don't know if you're mostly implementers or organizations using or wanting to use CVCRM, but if you have internal staff that would, you know, have the skills to conduct this, it's not rocket science. Anybody with uh, some basic analytic skills can go through, you know, building a questionnaire, understand how the organization works, understand what's not really working, and what you would expect from the CRM. So it's not rocket science. So if you want to do this on your own, you know, please do. Um, absolutely, you don't need a consultant for that. Um, so budget zero to three thousand dollars. We're pretty much on the lower end of that when we're working with customers because we're mostly with the smaller nonprofits. But imagine if you have a staff, you know, anywhere between 15 to 20, you'll probably be on the higher end of this. Um, this is a key step to go through because this really structures your project for the, for the rest of the deployment. So you need to go through that step. So um, we're at the roadmap stage. Um, and the next two steps, I call these the danger zone. I call these the danger zone because a lot of nonprofit organizations think they can do this on their own. And it's not a good idea at all. This is, you know, probably the only part of the process for which you need a consultant to help you. Um, and this is why. Installing the software you know, as long as you've got some basic computer skills, I'm sure you can read the documentation. I'm sure you can figure out how to install the software. And it's not because you've installed the software that you're out of the woods. You've installed the software, <coughs> there's nothing. It's zero. What comes after installing the software is what's important. It's configuring the software. And CVCRM, on one end, is such an incredibly rich software. It has like so many features, so many functions. You can do so many things with CVCRM on one end. On the other end, you have to understand because there's so many options, it's very complex to configure. There's so many ways you can do almost anything in CVCRM. There's so many ways you can personalize it for any type of nonprofit organization and any size of nonprofit organization. It's a hugely complex piece of software. You, unless you have great experience with CVCRM, unless you've worked with CVCRM for years, there's no way you're going to be efficient and you're going to get this configuration piece right the first time. Um, and so this is really why you need to hire a consultant to do this for you. That's probably the only part of the entire stack for which you need to hire someone. 
Um, so during the configuration, what we're doing is mapping business requirements to technology. Business requirements is what we collected with the questionnaire. It's how the organization works today, how they're functioning, how they're organizing. And we translate the answers to the questions on the questionnaires to actual configurations in CVCRM. So we're gonna con going to configure their membership types. We're going to configure their event templates. We're going to set their um, emailing templates. We're going to configure the custom fields, the groups, the tags, the uh, automated reminders. I mean, there's tons and tons of items we're going to have to configure during that phase. Um, I wish we could brain dump, you know, we could put our brain on a CD-ROM and ship it to all of you nonprofits around the world, and then you could just insert the CD-ROM and know how to do this. Unfortunately, that's not possible. The only way we can be efficient is through experience and best practices. And it's years of doing this for multiple types of organizations in multiple parts of the world um, that gets you to being efficient and doing things right with that configuration piece. But to make things worse, configuring, once you configure the CRM, you still have nothing. You still have zero you really start to have things in the CRM once you do data import. And data import, what you have to understand is the import um, menu that you have in CRM are very, very basic and they're very atomic. So if you go through the CRM, you can import contacts or you can import contributions or you can import memberships or you can import a number of other activities, but it's one at a time even when you're importing contacts, you're either importing individuals or you're importing organizations. You cannot have in the same file individuals and organization and just say import these contacts. The CRM, if you have a file with, you know, first name, last name, and employer, you'll have to run that file two times through the CVCRM import to first create the individuals and then create the organizations and link those individuals to the organization. Now, if you think about it, most of the time we get a membership, uh, we, we're working a lot with membership-based organization, a lot of nonprofits are, and, and we get, you know, one of the first files we get in the import set is a membership file. That membership file most of the time has first name, last name, organization, email address, phone numbers, etc. membership start date, membership end date, membership type, price paid, and date paid. Very simple Excel spreadsheet. All of you had that spreadsheet at some point in time. If you think about it, so you have individuals, you have organization, you have relationships. The individual need to be an employee of the organization. Then you have all these phone numbers, email addresses, etc., that need to be linked not only to the individual, but most often to the organization as well. For example, if you're importing corporate memberships, the membership renewal reminder will go to the organization. And so the organization needs to have an email address. And so that one you take from the file, but also the email address for the individual. And then you have the membership, and then you have the payment information for that membership. And so if you go through the CVCRM menus, you're going to have to import that same file a dozen times. And in between those imports, you're going to have to merge with the CVCRM IDs because when you import a membership, you have to have the contact ID it relates to. Um, and so all of this makes the import through the CRM interface highly impractical and really not realistic for anything that's less than a simple name and address name and email address uh, list. Um, and so you need a tool set to do this import. Um, what the tool set provides, it provides scripted imports. It allows you to configure the import, run through the import. And at the end of the import, you can check that everything lines up. If things are missing, if the import is not done in the right way, you hit a button, you redo the import. And you're going to have to do this over and over and over again. We usually do at least, you know, six to ten times um, in between validation sessions with the customers. 
Um, what the tool set provides is transforms and sanity checks. Um, so transforms actually um, change the data that's in the spreadsheet because very often it's very bad quality because it's been manually typed without any kind of uh, validation when it was typed. So phone numbers, you know, they're formatted every other way, email addresses, names, uh, email addresses, you have, you know, mail to colon and then the email address, websites, sometimes you have the HTTP, sometimes you don't. So what the tool set will provide is do some transformation on this data so it makes sense. So it's in a format that's acceptable to the CRM. And then it's going to do sanity checks. Does this check out? That phone number, you know, that person lives in the U.S. and it has like a four-digit phone number. Is this really a phone number or is it an extension for the phone number that's attached to the company? Those kinds of things is what you do during the import. And finally, probably the most important is the automated deduplication. Because very often you have, you know, like one file for each event, this organization one, and that file has all the registrants for this event. Well, that same person maybe went to three or four or five of these events. Chances are when they're registered, they didn't use the same first name, last name, email address, exactly spelled the same way, etc. And so you need something that when you go through this import and when you read all of these import files one after the other, you're able to match John Smith in this spreadsheet with John Smith in the other and say, hey, this is the same contact and we'll get two event registrations for the same contact. And you want to do this before you actually put the data in the CRM because otherwise you go through this import and then you're going to tell the customer, well, before you can use the CRM, you're going to have to spend a couple weeks going through the DDoP function in CVCRM and cleaning your data. That's a very bad idea. You're going to start with the CRM with a chore, with a chore rather than, char than start with a success. So it's key to have this uh, deduplication um, when, when you do the import. And all of that is done by tool sets. There's a number of tool sets that are available. We just had a session this morning um, and I discussed the tool set I'm using. Um, there's a number of other consultants that were in this round table discussing their tool sets as well. Um, and, and I'll be glad to discuss this, but it's like a whole other topic. Like we could do five Silicon sessions just on this single topic. So we have half an hour left. So where are we in terms of um, um, timeline, budget, etc.? So timeline, uh, it can be a few days. If we have those import files available and they are very simple, firing up a CVCRM instance, configuring the CRM and importing the data takes a few days, four or five days, no more. It's not, it's not a huge amount of work in itself. So that's, I would say, the minimum amount of time. Resource, you know, 10 hours if you have just very basic import files. It sounds about right. Um, and budget uh, can start at $1,000 and then climb up. The higher limit really is the complexity of the import files. We find out that for uh, quick start services we deliver to our customers, we that's why we always take the price of the import out of the quick start because this is the main, um, the main quantity as part of that quick start. The main variable is how long are we going to spend on the import. We have similarly sized organizations, you know, organizations with like four or five staff. Um, some of them come to us, they have like four import files. It's very clean, it's very neat because they, they had people that were very careful about their data and that understood the value of not having duplicates, of having all this information merged, um, et cetera. And we have other organizations that are about the same size. And they come to us and boy, it's a mess. You have part of this is in the outlook of the executive director, part of this is in constant contact. We have that intern that went out last year. I gave her, I gave her a phone call and she was gonna send me the files she had on her laptop. I mean. Yeah, and so really it can literally range from a few hours to, you know, a few weeks to do an import for a similarly sized organization. So I 
show me your import files and then I can give you a quote, but definitely nothing before. Um, so quick start process. Um, so we're, I say we're done with like the, the, the structuring things. The rest of the process is the same. You know, now, you know, as much as things were slightly different and the interviews, the questionnaire, the implementation and the import was, was varying from customer to customer, when we go on that second stage, it's almost the same for every customer and kind of try, the train is on the tracks and we're just moving ahead. So the next step in our process is to train our customers on contact management. And we train them on contact management, getting around the CRM, doing searches, using the advanced search screen, um, listing people that are in groups and tags, using the dashboards, the membership dashboard, the event management dashboards, etc. So kind of managing their contacts and going around the CRM and finding information. No more. Then we move to the next step, which is data import validation. And this is a critical step. So I said mission critical, because it's really critical that you go through that step. Um, during that step, you're going to put a, a development instance of the CRM in the customer's hand, and they're going to go through their data. And it's the first time they go through these data, so they're going to have some surprises, good or bad. Um, but at the end of the process, they should give you a check mark and say, yeah, all of the data I'm expecting is in the CRM. I have all my members, I have all my events, I have data that looks clean, um, and, and basically everything checks out in terms of the import. If that doesn't work, you go back to data import. This is why it's scripted, so you can change whatever needs to be changed and then run the script again and come back to the customer, I've corrected what was missing. Let's have a second look. Um, short story here. Um, we, we run through a very complicated import for one of our customers. It came from another system that's named IMIS, uh, IMIS. It's a very complex uh, system in terms of the data structure. The, their database has 600 tables. <laughs> CVCRM has, you know, a fifth, less than a fifth of this. Um, and so, and there's indexes everywhere and lookup tables, etc. And so we go through some very complicated queries and, you know, we ended up with data that looked correct. And so we give the CRM in the hands of the customer and the customer was just panicked. He said, no, oh, that's not possible. What have you done? And turns out that um, we misinterpreted one of the indexes. And so instead of joining people with the right, was it the uh, physical address or whatever? So we joined people with another address. So people that were supposed to live in UK were now living in New Zealand and vice versa. And so the customer was completely panicked. And <laughs> literally, we told the customer, no, 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 no. Because he thought we had completely messed up the data. He didn't realize, you know, we went back to the script. We, okay, that's not the right index. Let's, let's take the next column in the database. And then we rerun the process and everything lined up perfectly. And for that customer, it was like magic. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's fixed. <laughs> so very important to go to the data import validation. Um, we find that when we weren't thorough during data import validation, was the customer wasn't thorough when we didn't, drive them through validating data in the proper ways, we had issues down the line because we missed something. And then, you know, one piece of information was missing. And of course, this is the piece of information that is critical for the membership manager. Um, and so that, that's a, a key step. So until you go through that step, you just loop between data import and data import validation until you get the check mark. Once you have the check mark, then go live. As we've said before, small section of the CRM. Do I have some slides? Yeah, easy street. You know, you've, you've, done, you've done your job. You can basically lay back and then, uh, and then enjoy the rest of the ride. So go live, which is basically we turn on the CRM and we say, okay, now it's officially used for all of your contact data. So if you have an updated email address, an updated phone number, you enter it in the CRM. 
you no longer enter it in your spreadsheet. That's the go live. Um, all of the staff gets access to the CRM, um, and then they start using it day to day. And then we go through the second training. So we have a training curriculum. You've probably seen it downstairs. We have first the contact management. That's way up there. And then we have event management, membership management, contribution management, and now we have an advanced training that's also available on the advanced features of the CRM. Um, so depending on what we have on our roadmap, we'll go with one training or the other. So if we decided to start with managing events with the CRM, we'll have event management as training number two, and immediately the person in charge of the events will start managing the events on the CRM. And then we'll wait, you know, a couple of weeks. People need to digest that new tool. And then we'll go through another training and then we'll deploy the CRM on another part of the organization. So now you're here. So people are starting to use the CRM. People obviously are starting to reap the benefit of the CRM. But it's also, you know, you're on, you're on that slope. Um, and because people had expectations that are completely different than what they're experiencing at the present time. And so this is the most critical time because uh, you have to have the champion. Because you, as, as providers, we're almost out of this. The champion is the most important person in the organization. The champions needs to go from person to person every day. You know, what about the CRM? Are you having issues? What's going wrong? Etc. So we, our business is doing software as a service. So at this point in stage, we are behind the champion every step of the way. So every time there's an issue with the CRM, the champion or any person in the staff can call us. We answer that call. We provide support. We, do, you know, provide additional training on the spot if needed, etc. But if you don't have somebody that's providing software as a service, the champion will need to invest the time necessary to fix all of these issues. Number one, success factors. This is where we are. Deal with resistance. Be consistent, no compromise. We're down here. We've done all of the above, and now we are down here. Now we're going to face resistance from that person in the corner. And, hey, 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 I'm not going to like your CRM. Um, <laughs> this is where management needs to be very supportive. Because people are going to start complaining, and management needs to say, no more spreadsheet. This is the tool going forward. If you don't like it, let's fix it. Let's find out why you don't like it, and let's fix it so that you like it, and it can drive efficiency in the way you're doing things in the morning. But I don't want to see you with that spreadsheet ever again. <laughs> it's done. It's gone. If you need a spreadsheet, you do an export from the CRM, and you have your spreadsheet. Um, and so the, this is really key. So end user support, remember the champion, you know, if you have somebody you can call and they can answer any questions you have, fine. If not, the champion needs to go on the forums. The champions need to read the book, needs to learn the CRM book by heart, needs to know every line of this, and needs to go around and make sure everybody is happy in the organization. We need to communicate on successes. You know, somebody tells you, ah, oh, I like the way this report looks. It's really nice. Write it down, put it in an email, send the email to all of the staff. And, and that's how you're going to communicate on those easy wins and successes for the CRM. Um, prioritization and problem solving. Uh, this is the, 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 the laggard. This is the person in the corner. Um, th there's always going to be laggards. There's always going to be people that are more resistant to change than others. This is human nature. Don't focus on these people initially. Focus on the ones that are enthusiastic about the CRM. Focus on people that like what they're seeing on the screen, that understand the value of the CRM. And once these people are converted, you know, the laggards will be kind of isolated. You know, they'll, they'll be the last person to not like the CRM, and then they'll like it. That's the way it works. Don't spend time on the laggards because you will not change their mind. Only their coworkers will. And perseverance. Don't ever let down. So we're about 
When does the session end? 3.15. Okay, so I have 10 more minutes. So we are about three months after launch. Uh, 3.30. Oh, okay. Oh, so we've got plenty of time, right? Oh, sorry, I was speeding up. Um, so uh, in terms of timeline, we're about three months after launch. That's what we've seen out of you know, the many customers we've implemented. It takes about three months for the culture of the organization to change. Because it's really a cultural shift. It's a huge change. We've said it before, right? And so it takes about three months to digest that change. That's what we've seen. You know, some organizations go faster. Some organization takes a bit longer. But it's about three months down the line, more or less. People are, are then used to using the CRM on a daily basis, and they rely on the CRM for the day-to-day -day work. Um, and they've, they've let go of their previous tools. Um, in terms of resources, many more man hours. Many, many more man hours, because nobody at the beginning of the project even guesstimated how long it's going to take to support your users during that three months transition. And most projects fail, not so much because of the implementation, et cetera, but because of the lack of consistency and because of the lack of efforts afterwards. Because somebody starts saying, oh, it doesn't work. I cannot get the report I was expecting from that system. I'll just keep with my spreadsheet. And this is like cancer. You know, there's one, and then there's two, and then they talk at the coffee machine. And hey, I heard that she had some issues as well. And it grows and grows and grows, and the project fails. Very soon, soon enough, nobody starts using the CRM anymore. Everybody reverts to their spreadsheet. And that's how most of the project dies. Um, so um, the champion is critical, and this is why they need to be very motivated when you pick them up, because they will have plenty of opportunities to be discouraged during those three months time frame. Um, and they certainly, nobody even understands how long it's going to take and how many efforts. If the champion is on his or her own, you know, going through the forums, you've all gone through the forums and the wiki and, and the gyra and, and the book, trying to find answers and being frustrated because you're not finding the answer you're expecting or nobody seems to quite have what you're looking for. Um, but at the end of the three months period, you start reaping all the benefits of CDCRM and you will really realize that it was worth it. It was painful, but it was worth it. And, and CDCRM can now grow with the organization. It can, it can really tackle any issues you have uh, internally. It can really help you with any of the processes you want to implement as a nonprofit because it's such a fantastic tool in the end. So I hope I didn't discourage any of you because it's really worth it. I really mean it. I hope you learned a lot. Thank you.